a lot of what you said there was just kind of looking for general critique. Um, I did look at this for like a brief moment before I uh, started the stream here. So I will point out uh, really quick, you do have some, some funky junky going on back here. I would take a look at some of this. So you got some holes in your meshes. That's pretty easy to fix. You can probably just delete your... I don't know how uh, precious this topology is to you. I'm guessing not looking at it based on uh, some of the information here. So I would uh, close up your holes and then this stuff here, if you do not know, it looks like maybe you tried to do a, uh, I can't remember the name of the brush. There's like a curve, curve holes brush or curve bridge. It looks like maybe you tried to do a curve bridge brush here or something. I'm not sure to try to close that up. I would just Dynamesh this and redo your uh, reprojection for subdivision levels. If you don't know how to do that, I have an awesome tutorial coming out tomorrow. But to delete your curves on your mesh, just really quickly uh, go into your stroke menu, go under curve functions and just click on delete. And that'll at least get rid of the curves that you have. Uh, the cleanup of the geometry will be another thing. All right, so let's just talk about general, uh, some general stuff. Since you didn't really give me a specific area that you want me to focus, which is absolutely fine, you did provide a reference, which makes this uh, a million times easier. If you want me to do a good critique, always provide the reference that you're using. Um, so first thing that sticks out to me, I think, are the eyes and the shape of the eyes. Let me see something because I haven't looked at your eyes yet. So you've tried to use round eyes, which is something that I typically try to do as best as I can, uh, if it's possible. I think this is a character where you can still use round eyes, but the shape of your eyelids needs to be a little bit taller. And then they have a little bit of taper to them. Specifically, if you look at this eye, his right eye, it goes from a little bit more narrow down here at the bottom to a little bit more wide. So it's kind of like an egg shape. I would say that his eyes are an upside down egg. So I think you could probably get a little bit more of that height in there. And because of that, you might have to stretch up your eyes a little bit. You might, I'm not sure. You'll have to play around with it. But that would be my first note. Uh, you can also tell because the shape of his iris pupil combo thing there he's got going on is a little ovoid as well. I think a lot of the modeling here is very nice. You've done a great job of this. I, I'm i trying to think of what I would do with this character's like jaw transition into his neck. I would probably handle this the same way, but I, I do not like the silhouette of this character, in particular in the face, but the weight of this kind of feels a little awkward. If we're looking at this guy, uh, this dude here, he feels like very like straight up, like prim and proper, like, yeah, hey, I'm the I'm the Ice King, right? But this dude, he's got, he, he feels a little scoliosis-y to me. Uh, and I always try to get a little bit of that, you know, beautiful, sexy S-curve in a lot of my characters. But I think this is a character where I would actually um, avoid that. So let me, very quickly go into T-Pose Mesh or Transpose Master, if you're familiar with that. It's in your Z plugin menu. And we are going to attempt to correct some of this very quickly. Uh, thank you, Marta Canart, for the follow. And welcome, welcome to the stream. So very quickly, I'm just gonna turn on Symmetry. I am going to mask off part of this head and all the stuff up there and just do a little blurring out. And then I'm going to try sliding him back a little bit. Let's grab the head here. Let's maybe just push in and around that a little bit. Let's just kind of play around with the shape here. Try a couple things. Let me see something else in the face that might help us out really quick. Just a quick rotate to straighten some of this out a little bit. And you might need to fill in some more of the volume in the front here coming down. So 
So he's got, if we look here, we can see that cheek hit and then it flows down into the neck a little bit. So we can still get that, I think. And maybe try to correct some of this. Let's go back to the solo there. Just maybe go a little bit more thin from the sides. It looks like you've... I don't know how much symmetry you've broken really on the face. I don't think too much. I think more so the geometry is unsymmetrical just because of the spiky hair. But I think uh, I think that's at least starting to feel a little bit better. This is kind of a, an awkward transition here. I was thinking it would be either something like this or tightening up the jawline. And I think it might actually be a combination of those two things. But just to like really help with um, like looking at his chest, he's it, it's a little, like he's feeling like he's standing up straight. He's kind of poofing out his chest a little bit, but you kind of have him like like hunched forward a little bit. So I'm gonna just break your, your geometry here and just kind of move that with my move brush out a little bit. So it feels a little bit more full. And I would spend some more time on this, but I'm just trying to do this quick so that you can see the things that I'm noticing so I can point them out quickly. So let's head on back. We'll T-pose, sub tools. We got solo mode on. Whoopsies, that's okay. This will take just a couple seconds here. So yeah, you might wanna carry this shape all the way through for the entire thing. It might be unfinished, I don't know. I would probably do a similar thing though because it does feel uh, like a collar to me. So you cannot see the back of this character, so we have to infer some information there. Uh, but I, I actually do think that is feeling a little bit better, kind of just standing up a little bit more straight. I think maybe I've pushed the chest up a little bit too much, but I think that's fine. Looking at the face, this is something I do want to focus on here a little bit. I just want to see very quickly what some of this would look like if I just sharpen up this transition very quickly. Just a wee bit. And try to push some of this jaw a little bit further since it's kind of all just one shape blending in. I would experiment with this. You might be able to do something a little bit better than me, especially since we're trying to do this quick. And it looks like the cheek hit, so kind of flown back from the corner of the mouth here to the back corner of the jaw, so we can start to find where that silhouette starts to turn there. Let's see, and obviously I'm really sharpening these up just to get the form to change direction. I'm not saying you should um, really start to like pinch that up. So he's starting to get a, just a wee bit too chunky in the cheeks, which is fine. If we rotate around here, we can pull that back in, but we want to, I, I typically try to exaggerate a lot of these hits first just so I can figure out where they are. So I think we're starting to get there. I would play around with this a little bit more. Again, I don't, whoops, <laughs> perfect. I, I don't think it needs to be quite that sharp, but maybe getting some kind of hit transition there will make that feel uh, a little bit better, especially from the profile, because it, my, from the profile, it just feels a little, little undefined to me. And I think that might help you out. It's tough though, it's tough when you, um, you know, you have to do the design work yourself. You, it's not all done for you, right? There's uh, some stuff here that you're gonna have to figure out. You only got one image to work from. But I don't know, I kind of, I kind of enjoy that. I enjoy being able to get in there and get some more stuff done. All right, let's continue on here. The next thing that I wanted to focus on specifically were the hands. Um, I think the rest of this is fine. I'm not gonna say too much about this. Uh, obviously it's not completely finished and you got some more stuff you need to do. Uh, but down here in the hands, we've looked at the face and now let's kind of do a quick little comment and critique on our hands. I am going to delete one of your hands so that I can just work on one of these. A few things. First of all, they feel a little undefined. I would go back through and define some of the form here a little bit better. Uh, they're just kind of 
all over the place for lack of a better, better term. Uh, another thing that I really want you to focus on is taking some time to really look at the shape of your fingers and start thinking about tapered shapes and thick to thin. So these are just kind of quickly sketched in, but I think there's a lot of really cool gesture going on in some of these fingers. And specifically, tapering from a thinner shape to a thicker shape as we go out towards the tip of the finger. And I think there's a lot of cool stuff that you could probably do with this. So I'm just going to use my back face, move back face masking. I would spread these fingers out a little bit more if I was gonna be working on these. I don't wanna completely screw up your, your fingernails and everything else. But I'm gonna go from a little bit of a more thin finger to a little bit of a thicker finger and see if we can get some of that nice appeal in there that I see going on with this hand. So we'll just kind of blend this shape out a little bit more. And probably they feel a little thin from the, uh, the side here, so they could probably use some volume on the bottom as well. And let's see. We don't want to get like ogre fingery. Let's go a little bit more, a little bit more small on this one, I think. I'm not sure if he has three fingers here and a thumb, or if, I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm sure you've looked at this as well. I think it's fine with three fingers though. I don't mind. So starting to shape that up a little bit more. I would, here, I'm gonna turn off my poly paint. Again, I would really start to define some of the shapes here a little bit better. Kinda wrapping around here. Make sure all that's blending together well. And then around here where you've done the fingernails, I haven't really touched your thumb too much. What I recommend doing, just defining that a little bit better, a little bit more clean, and start thinking about how these shapes interact. So if you have a piece of geometry that's representing something that's like a tooth or a nail or a piercing, anything that's interact, it doesn't even have to be interacting with flesh, uh, but just anything that's kind of interacting with anything else, you really want that integration to feel like it makes sense. And right now these feel just kinda plooped on. So let's maybe look at how we could integrate that a little bit better. And most of what I've done already, just kind of like building up that shape a little bit more. And then just rotate that down or not. <laughs> I'll rotate that down, there we go. And then maybe taking something like an inflate brush around here to really start to build up that shape. And I think that'll get you in a good place. Let me use, sure, sharp soft edge. So starting to build up this form a little bit, getting that to feel a little bit more fleshy. And I think these might be, a, eh, you know what, maybe not too thick, let's just, Kind of move this up a little bit more. Try to find a good place for this to exist. So I think this will take some time as well. I'm just trying to show you some quick things that you can probably do here to get that feeling a little bit better. And there we go. Now we're starting to feel like that's digging in there a little bit more and the flesh is kind of wrapping up and around that nail and obviously there needs to be some blending between that. But those are the few things that I would look at down here in your hands. I think you are capable of that based on some of the other modeling that we've seen here in this dude. But yeah, good luck to you. And I really think that's all I'll say about this dude. He's a cutie. He's a cutie for sure. All right, beautiful.